Yeah, the first time I heard Lenny uh, was in the 70s. And I thought it was a really sophisticated sound. It was a beautiful tone. And it was like nobody I'd ever heard before. It was a whole different approach to the, to the guitar. And uh, as I found out later on, of course, it was from listening to piano players. Lenny played like a piano player, he played a lot like Bill Evans. And that style is really difficult on the guitar. And he totally mastered that. If you listen to his solo, on uh, Sweet Georgia Brown that he recorded with Chet Atkins where Chet just stops playing and Lenny takes the track. It's, it's monumental. It's absolutely as incredible as anything I've ever heard in my life. It's as good as watching Oscar Peterson, you know, and that's saying something. Yeah, that's saying something. Yeah. Wow. And so I know it, it, in your history, you toured along with your family as yeah. a child playing mm -hmm. guitar. Lenny had sort of that same experience. Yeah, Lone Pine Junior. Yeah, Lone Pine Junior, guitar wizard. That's right. <laughs> guitar wizard. Well, he was already better than all of us by the time he was 12. Right. You know, and it's like uh, an incredibly gifted guy, but dri he was driven as well, I'm, you know. Although I only met him in person a few times. Um, I'm sure that when, when he was a kid, like he was a lot more driven than I was, and I was pretty driven, you know? So can you can you tell- a little bit of light on what it's like to be a kid on the road playing guitar with your family and, you know, what? what? Well, um, when, you're, when you're the youngest in a traveling, touring, performing troupe, so to speak, like I was and like, like Lenny was, it's pure adventure um, and it, it, you know, the things that was normal life for us, other kids thought was amazing. You know, my brothers and I, we, we did our schooling by correspondence, so we didn't have to go to a school. We didn't have a house. We lived in the car or slept in the tent or slept out under the stars. Um, and we went on stage every night and entertained people. And other kids thought that was the coolest thing in life. You know, they thought we were the cool guys. And really what, what was going on in my head was I was envying those kids, wishing I had a normal life where I could be home every night with my family and all that stuff. I actually wanted a normal life as a kid, but, um, I still wanted to play, you know, um, but of course, I'm I'm doing the same thing now. I'm I'm 61 years old. I play more now than when I was 16, you know, and I travel more now than when I was 16. And um, I'm I'm living the dream. I'm I'm doing what I believed uh, that I'm supposed to be doing in my life. I'm doing it, and. Um, that's a very powerful thing when someone does what they're born to do, you know. Um, and I think Lenny, Lenny's uh, early life was probably like that as well. I think he had a close family. And I think, I, I don't know for sure. Uh, there, I'm sure there are people who are a lot closer to the family uh, who could tell you that you know, he probably wanted to break out on his own and get away from what his mum and dad were, were doing musically right. because that's what, that, that's what his calling was, you know? And um, you can't get in the road of that. You, you gotta nourish and nurture that, you know? And I think maybe he didn't get that from his father. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe his father wanted him to go into, into his footsteps kind of thing, and I don't think Lenny had any intention of that, you know. Right, right. So. so can you tell me about the first time you met Lenny? Oh, sure. Well, I went to Nashville in uh, 1980 at the invitation of Chet Atkins. And so I arrived in town and I 
rang him and he said, come on down, I'll see you right now. So I got in the car <coughs> and I raced down and Chet came down the stairs with his guitar and shook my hand and put his arm around me and, and he um, uh, said, you know, you want to pick a little? And so him and I sat there and played for a while and then he said, I want you to come upstairs and meet the greatest guitar player walking the earth right now. That's exactly what he said. And I could hear this music up the stairs and I knew exactly who it was. Uh, and uh, I said, oh, it's Lenny Bro, you know? And he said, that's right, like that. Anyway, so uh, I, I enter the room and Lenny's sitting there head down playing away and he looks up and keeps playing and Chet introduces me and, and, uh, and he just says, hey man, wanna play something? Just like that. So, uh, like, man, you want to play something? You know, how he used to talk. And so we start playing and then Chet grabs a guitar and the three of us are playing. And this went on for hours. You know, there were, every now and again, Chet would have to jump out of the circle and take a phone call, put the phone back down, he'd just jump right back into it, whether we were in the middle of the song or whatever, you know. And, and that was my first kind of taste of Lenny's playing up close. Uh, but it was nothing compared to what I saw that night. It was on what, what he did the, when I took him to where he was playing with a band. What he did that night was far, far deeper and untouchable than what he was doing with me in the room with Chet. He was playing a lot simpler and, and just jamming away and having fun. But when he, when I, when he got on stage that night, it was forget it, it was so deep. And um, when I left Chet's office to give Lenny a lift to where he was playing, Chet grabbed me by the sleeve and he said, hey, you take care of him. And I said, you don't worry, I will. So, um, and Lenny was freaked out, you know, um, like I'm, I'm driving down the street and he assumed I didn't know where to go. And I knew exactly where to go. And every time we'd stop at a red light, he'd almost climb out the window saying, hey, how do we get to, you know, asking pedestrians? And I'm like, sit down, man. I know where I'm going, you know. <laughs> he was freaked out. But um, he played so great that night. I mean, he really did. He blew my mind because that it, he did all the real deep stuff that night that was uh, on another level. And, and uh, you know, it forced me into silence, you know, like I, I just couldn't speak after he played. I, I didn't know what to do. I thought, you know, I never heard anybody reach that deep, you know. And uh, there's something about that that is otherworldly, you know. When, not only when someone's abilities can do that, but that the depth of what they're, they're thinking, you know. And um, I still haven't heard anybody who went that deep, you know. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about the relationship between Chet and Lenny? Oh, yeah. Well, Chet loved Lenny like a son. Um, and, uh, and when Chet loves on you, you're really loved, you know. He was so, he was so wonderful to me, too. Um, but uh, Chet and Lenny had a very honest relationship. Lenny said to Chet, I'm a druggie and I'll... I'll, I'll take whatever I can out of your, your pill uh, cupboard, you know? So don't trust me, you know? And that's sad, but, it, but I admire him for his honesty, you know? Um, and Chet tried all he could to really help Lenny and, and to, to show him off, you know? Um, got him gigs in, around, around Nashville and all that sort of stuff. But, uh, you know, nothing held up because Lenny was not right in, in himself. And, um, and I think he was a, such a complex person. He was this powerful, strong figure and this unsure of himself little boy underneath. And that's the one that people always took advantage of, you know. I think his brother and his mother probably saw how powerful he could be as a person. Um, but I saw him being very, very vulnerable. Um, but as a player, he was unequaled. He was a titan, you know. 
So um, can you talk a little bit about his playing. What is it that, in sort of in layman's terms, um, okay. what is it that makes Lenny's playing so unique? Okay. What makes his playing incredibly unique was the fact that he could improvise complex lines over chords underneath while comping those chords and this melodies and improvisation that he would create over the top were completely separate and had their own world kind of thing. And that's like a split brain thing, you know? But his ideas were so complex that uh, first of all, I don't know how he thought that way, and secondly, I don't know how he physically could have done it. But I saw it, right. you know, and um, it takes a lot of control and a lot of ability to be able to do that. It's right. okay. incredible. Because um, I think what he's labeled as playing and what you are labeled as playing is called like hybrid finger style. Can you just briefly tell me what that mm -hmm. means? Okay. Well. See, okay, Lenny came from the, Le um, the um, Chet Atkins, Mill Travis, yes. Jerry Reed kind of school of you play boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, left hand on the piano, you play that with your thumb, and then you play the melodies and the harmonies with your fingers, which is how I play and a lot of people play. What Lenny did was then broke that up, so he copied the sound of the piano doing, you know, sustaining chords, then kind of making the feeling the pulse of the of the backing and then the melody was completely separate on top so it was three separate things and uh, that's the only way I can describe it but it, it's a singing lyrical style of improvising with a, a real steady backing uh, underneath you know um, so some of his lines like he'd be play he'd play duh like like that, and there's the time, and the backing would be going dun 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 boom dun 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 like that, and he'd sing it. It'd be this thing singing over the top of it. It was beautiful. I get chills when I when I'm thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, what do you think Lenny's legacy is for like contemporary guitarists like yourself? I mean, does his style still live on? Because it's so complicated, there really aren't very many people who are able to yeah, do it. There are probably a handful of people who can play some of his stuff. Not as good as him, I'm sure, and I'm, I haven't heard them, but I'm sure there are people. Everybody has a disciple out there. There's always a messenger. Um, the thing that I think is that Lenny's style of playing, it only appeals to certain musicians. It does not appeal to the public, and that's why he struggled so much to get a crowd is because people are not interested in that. And that's the straight out truth, you know. Um, I, I love what, what he did and I loved his playing, but I can certainly see why he didn't appeal to the public is because he, he was introspective. He, he was uh, uh, into the playing and and that was really all. He, he, he didn't reach out to the public, you know? And if you want the public to come and see you, you gotta reach out to them. And um, so there's, it, jazz musicians always walk that fine line, you know? A guy like Oscar Peterson, he also, I mean, he, he would just come out, bow to the audience, he'd get on the piano and he'd play, and he would blow your mind with his playing. He would totally be entertaining as a player, right? Uh, but there are a lot of jazz musicians who aren't, who, you know, I can watch them for five minutes and go, yep, I can hear he's got some good knowledge, he's got some great ideas, he's got some ab abilities, but he's not, he's not causing me to feel an emotion. And yet, give me one minute of B.B. King or Stevie Ray Vaughan, and he'll grab you right here. And that's the difference, you know? And, and I can definitely understand why it was a struggle for Lenny, because what he was doing was way beyond any, anything that anybody ever heard. So to, to have a lot of people not even realize how deep it was must have been hurtful for him in his own way, you know? And, you know, Chet always said to him, 
can you just play the melody? Let's at least have the melody before you go off into Lenny land, you know? And I can understand that, yeah. you know? Yeah. But, you know, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's how it was, yeah. you know? Yeah. And how do you think Lenny should be remembered? Remembered by his, his videos and his, his, his records, you know? Listen to his music. You'll hear his heart and his soul. Um, uh, he was also an example to us all of how not to live, you know, yeah. you know, and, 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 you know, don't, don't let yourself lead such a tortured life, you know, you know, make your life something great. You can still have the, uh, your music and all that sort of stuff. But you've got to have a good life. You've got to enjoy life, you know. This is not a rehearsal. This is the real thing. So you better get on with it.